On October 18, 2019, Amanda and Armando's 15-year-old daughter, Mariah, missed her bus from school and did not come home. Amber spent hours frantically calling hospitals and police trying to locate her daughter. And then her worst fears were confirmed. Amber received a chilling call from Mariah telling her that she had been kidnapped. The day I was abducted was terrifying. It really was, but um, the only thing I was thinking is how am I gonna get out of this? How can I get through it? Um, how could I get home? So he, he gets in the car, he brings you to his house, or? Yeah, yeah, so sorry. Um, he took me out of the car, and I was stalling. I was, like, pushing back, like, I'm, I, I need to leave, like, I'm going. And he was, like, just pushing me into the house, like, kept pushing me, and his dog's just going crazy. And instead of going through the front door, he actually took me through the back. And once he gets in your house, what, what happens? Yeah, so he uh, got really mad. He hit the cupboard because he missed me. And after that, he got even more mad. He hit me. I fell down to the ground and he ripped all of my clothes off. And then he, he um, yeah, proceeded he, to sexually yeah, assault he you? Pre he proceeded to sexually assault me after, um, and beat me. Uh, there was one time where he was like, uh, put this towel on and then um, he made me walk around his whole house helping him find his cigarettes and then he would like blow the smoke in my face and everything. And right after that, again, he would sexually assault me. But he would walk behind me, smacking me and everything. And how long did this go on for? It was probably around three hours. Three hours, yeah. which, you know, that's a super long time to yeah. endure something like this. Um, this is from the police reports and uh, the court reports. During the original kidnapping, sexual assault and aggravated assault, Little Hale sexually assaulted Mariah four times. He choked her twice, struck her with a fist 40 to 50 times, and then struck her in the head with a dumbbell once. He also pulled off seven of your acrylic fingernails from Mariah's hand to cause pain to her. He also urinated on her three times, punched her, smashed her head into the wall multiple times when she spit the urine out. He also tore out her nose ring and placed a stud in her mouth forced her to swallow it by closing her mouth and punching her repeatedly in the face and throat until she swallowed it. Mariah said she was dazed and lightheaded. Mariah was able to position herself over Little Hale and she was able to grab his penis and testicles and she began twisting and pulling on them in an attempt to make him release her, her hair. Mariah said that Little Hale then bit down on her left calf on her leg very hard and would not release the bite. Mariah said she repositioned herself to get her leg out of Little Hale's bite and then head-butted him, causing him to release his grip on her hair. Mariah said she then used both thumbs to gouge Little Hale's eyes, and when she did that, she knocked off his eyeglasses. Mariah said that she was able to get free of Little Hale's grip, and she ran outside through the back door, ran into a neighbor's yard by jumping on a block wall, she was able to find an unlocked door at the back of the neighbor's house, and she entered after no one answered her scream for help. Uh, that's truly incredible. Uh, I think by fighting as hard as you did, and listen, I think most people wouldn't have fought as hard as you do because of fear, because of being paralyzed by fear, uh, by submitting, uh, you know, but not wanting to get injured more. Uh, I, I, I would guess that this guy was going to kill you if you didn't get out of that house. So yeah. uh, you're very lucky to be here today. So when you're going through this, is, is, did you feel like, like, if I don't do this, I will die? Yes, I did. He told me that he would kill me and that he would bury me somewhere far, far away. Oh, jeez. Did he come running after you? Was he looking for you? No. Um, when I left, all I heard was, like, or still from in the house, he was, like, coughing really hard. and. Um, so you kind I, of him up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and when I was in the neighbor's house, uh, I had found a spot, and when I went in there, he actually... I saw him through the blinds and he walked through the front and the front door was locked 
because I had locked it, but the back door was not. And he actually went around, went through the back door, brought his dog in the neighbor's house and had his dog search for me. The dog did see me. The dog did not like spot me out and be like, hey, she's up here. Right. But um, the dog walked away and I just stayed quiet. And all I heard So was, you're like, in the neighbor's house and he enters the neighbor's house. Yes, yeah, searching for me. And he's looking for you with yeah. the dog. Yeah. But then like I heard like a car and then maybe not too long after all I heard was a back door slam. All right, so then he left. Yeah. And where were you hitting in the neighbor's and house? So the neighbor's house, the laundry room. So I looked in like a lot of rooms. I just like glanced real quick because I did not have any time. And I was like, I need a good hiding spot. So I go and I go and I see a laundry room and um, they have a piece of like drywall that was cut out, but you couldn't tell once it was placed there. So I moved it. I got like into that back space area and then I pushed the drywall back in front of me. Yeah, good for you. Um, your dad who, you know, he sprung into action and he kind of mistaken, he thought that the guy's house that you yes, ran to was the guy that abducted you. Yeah, I gave him the address of that, of where I was, but um, my dad, all he heard was I was there. Right, and so that, he grabbed the happened. shotgun and said, let's go. Yes. Let's bring out your mom and dad. Can you relate to this story? Go to www.stewilkos.com to get my help. You're thinking that she's at the house where this happened. You didn't realize it was at the, the neighbor's house that she Correct. ran to. What goes through your mind when you see her? First of all, I didn't recognize her 100%. You know what I mean? I knew she was there, but I knew it was her. Ran up to her, gave her a kiss, told her I loved her, and I said, where's that rat? Yeah. that. <laughs> How joyous were you when you saw your dad? I felt safe. I felt, I felt happy. You like, felt like it was all over finally. Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, Samuel seems like a really nice guy. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. He did offer to fix the holes in the wall. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's a nice gesture. Um, sorry. But here, you know, he, he comes in, he, and, you know, he, he, he does the right thing. He, he lets her call you, and he's calling the police. Let's bring Samuel out. Now, yes. you haven't seen him since that day. You haven't even spoken to each no, other. No, we dropped right. the blanket this, back off, but that was, that was it. I just saw the girl. Yeah. When you come home and your dogs, you said, uh, found her, right. and you haven't even seen, you didn't even know her name or anything ever I since didn't. then. I didn't, no. Because well, she's a minor, yeah. and yeah. the so police perfect. didn't ask you to come to court, because... They didn't. They had uh, enough evidence. He and, just got, um, got the 100 years in prison. Yeah. So yeah. this is your first time seeing her? Yes. She looks better. <laughs> she looks yeah. so much better. Yes. You know what you said about you couldn't even recognize your daughter? When I looked at that, I said, this doesn't even look anything like the person that I'm sitting here now. Um, yeah, I'm but so you glad that you're doing so much better. And to see you, you know, looking so beautiful, you're really an inspiration to me. And, and thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. You're an angel. When you see this young girl, like, you know, just beaten to a pulp, come out in your house, what were you thinking? I was absolutely shocked. Yeah. Um, it was something that took me a second to process. My mind couldn't process it in the moment. And it took five, ten seconds for me to even respond, yeah. um, seeing how horrible her situation was. Now, you then, um, you know, she's, you know, you're calling the police, you're waiting for the police to come. Here comes dad with a shotgun, and he, you know, thinks it's you. What was that like? Oh, that was very frightening. Um, <laughs> that was <laughs> probably the, one of the scariest things that's happened in my life, yeah. yeah. And what makes you most angry about this situation? Lack of justice, for yeah. sure. Um, I mean, this guy had done so many other things in another state, 
he does 10 days in county jail. Um, they allow him to transfer from one state to another. He's living here now for three weeks and, and, and never got the, never even got as little as a house visit from the, from the local, you know, agencies. Yeah. Um, he's, he's supposed to have registered, never even did that. He had just served a little bit of time. Like he got caught up. In this some is other a guy crap. that shouldn't have been out. Correct. Uh, he had been arrested Correct. multiple, multiple, multiple he times. He, he got out two weeks to prior to this anything. in the in the same state. And they leave him leave the state, which is very unusual. He never that, even that. do as little as a house visit. I mean that. He violated. They didn't go pick him up. I mean, if you get so he should never ticket, been in the position lifted, to you know? do this to you. No, they, they 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 stated that they just didn't have enough probation officers per probation. But, but not even that. He shouldn't yeah. be out of jail. And one more thing that prison. makes me angry is they didn't give me 10 seconds with that. You know, you fighting back, it's just unbelievable. You, you were your own hero there. Like you said, you were like an action hero there. All right, but let's meet your grandmother, Carolyn. Just a minute, she's... Oh, okay. Um, how, how brave your granddaughter is, huh? She's insanely brave. And when I told her how sorry I was that this happened to her, she said, I'm not grandma because I got away and he'll never hurt anybody ever again. And yeah. I just was like... Wow, you know, yeah. just to hear that, you know. Is there anything you want to say to Samuel? <laughs> I'm sorry about. Yeah, we're sorry for it's traumatized. The trauma. I'm sorry. You don't need to be sorry at all. No, I. Uh, I you did I, I, what any father and brother would do, and what I would do for my sisters and my nieces and nephews. So, there's no hard feelings at all. For you. And I, and I gotta say, that's very big of you. Um, listen, this is a, this is just a story, an inspirational story that we're we're having you on the stage. There's no lie detector test, no DNA test. This is your story, but I think it's a powerful story. And unfortunately, things like this happen in this world. Yeah. And I would just think that I hope that if this happened to anybody, that they could be like you, react like you. Fight for your life. Do everything you can to survive. Um, keep your wits about you. And you did this at the age of 15, which is even more incredible. So, um, I mean, first of all, I, I, I really think that you're going to be a hero to a lot of young women out there. You did take somebody who had been terrorizing his communities for years and years and years. Never be able to take this guy off the streets, but you were able to take him off the streets. Yeah.